Okay, so in our um, surface area, right, we have two different formulas. We have the formulas for um, spheres and prisms, which is two base areas plus the perimeter times the height. So this is good for all prisms and all cylinders. And then for our cones and pyramids, those just have one base, so one base area, plus half of the perimeter times the slant height, and those come from a bunch of triangle formulas. So just remember when we have pyramids and or cones, the slant height comes up the middle of your base to the vertex of your cone. So there are basic formulas and then there are some advanced ones. So let's start with number three. This one is a pretty basic formula. <clears throat> okay, this happens to be for a cylinder. So we do two calculations. We find the area of your base, which is a circle. So we use pi r squared, which has a base area of simply 100 pi <clears throat> square meters. Okay, in addition to the base area, we also need to calculate base perimeter, which for a circle, once again, is the circumference, and that has a 2 pi r formula. So anytime we have a circular um, shape, like a cylinder or a cone, the base area is pi r squared, and the base perimeter, aka circumference, is 2 pi r. So now we take this and you throw it into your surface area formula. Two base areas plus base perimeter times height. And here your height is 33 because that is the distance in between your bases. So 100 pi is your base area, 20 pi is your base perimeter. to get a total surface area of 860 pi square meters. So I did not multiply anything by pi in my calculator. You just multiply the numbers, two times 100 and 20 times 33, and then you just glue the pi to the back of that. So let's do another basic one here, number five. <clears throat> um, we have a cone. So once again, we have to calculate the base area which is a circle, so pi 8 squared is 64 pi. And perimeter of your circle, 2 pi r, so 2 pi 8 is 16 pi. Now the only other thing we need to calculate for our cone is the slant height. And the slant height is the diagonal from the vertex to the base. <clears throat> and since we don't know it, we're going to have to calculate it by using the Pythagorean theorem. So 8 squared plus 15 squared equals L squared, and it turns out that your slant height is 17. <clears throat> so now we go into our surface area formula, which is just one base, because a cone clearly has one base, <clears throat> plus the formula says take half of the perimeter which was 16 pi, and multiply it by the slant height. Okay, so we do all this, and then you get your answer. And our units are square inches. So the surface area of that cone is 200 pi square inches. And if you put that in your calculator, that's fine, but it's no longer in terms of pi. Okay, let's do another straight basic one. That would be number nine, All right? So this is a triangular prism because it has a triangle for a base, right? And then there's another triangle on this side, which is why it's a triangular prism. So let's find the base area, which is a triangle. So one half of nine times 12, right? So it's a right triangle base times height. So we have a base area of 54, and our base perimeter is the sum of our three sides. So 9 plus the hypotenuse, which is 15, plus your vertical side of 12, 
So 9 plus 15 plus 12 is 36. <clears throat> Okay, which is all the information we need, and it also has a height of 20. So surface area is two base areas, right, because there's a triangle in the front and a triangle in the back, plus the perimeter, which we said is 36, the perimeter of your triangle, times 20. Okay, now, something that we don't talk a lot about, but this, right, this part, that is your perimeter times the height. That has a special name sometimes. That is called the lateral surface area. Okay, because that's the area that goes around your bases, right? Lateral means sides. So that's taking into account all of your rectangles, the rectangular faces that go with all of your triangular sides. Okay, so either way, Whenever we add these things together, we get a total surface area of 828 square centimeters. Okay, another one of our basic ones is number six. What's the surface area of a sphere with a diameter of 10? So a sphere has a four pi r squared formula. And if it has a diameter of 10, that means it has a radius of 5. And it says leave in terms of pi, so we are not going to multiply by pi in your calculator, which is fine, I hope, because 4 times 25 is just 100 pi square feet is the surface area of your sphere. So expect to have um, 5 or 6 of those straight formula ones on your test to see if you can plug and chug correctly. Okay, and then the next little section is all algebra, right? Find the radius. So here we have our hemisphere, which is a three pi r squared formula for a hemisphere, right? It has a circular base with a, radio, with a pi r squared, and then it has two for the curved part. So three pi r squared is the formula for your hemisphere. Now, don't forget to include the pi in your problem. That's where I see most students make mistakes. If they make mistakes with this, is that they forget to transpose the pi when they do their calculations. Okay, so pretty easy. The pi's calculate, or they cancel out. 432 divided by 3 is 144, and then taking this square root, we have a radius of... 12 feet. Okay, so there's some algebra that we're going to be included to do also on your test. Right? What is the radius of a hemisphere given the surface area? Okay, similar to number 10. Solve for x. Well, this is a, nope, it's a rectangular prism. So we can make any face you want to the base. And I'm going to choose this side because I know all of my dimensions. The top and bottom are 6, and the left and the right side are 8. Because even when I'm doing a problem in algebra, I still have to avoid or use the formula. So my base area, 6 times 8 is 48. And my base perimeter, 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 6 is 20, plus 8 is 28. So then x, therefore, is going to be my height in my surface area formula, <clears throat> right? Because now I'm going to use my base area and my base perimeter and plug it into my formula. 180 equals two base areas. Don't forget about the two even when we're doing algebra. Plus your base perimeter, 28 times your height of x. Okay, so now it's just a matter of doing the algebra correctly to solve for x. So subtract 96 from both sides, and then divide that number by 28, and I believe we get a height of just 3 inches <clears throat> when you solve this for x. So subtract 96 and divide by 28. 
Okay, continue with our algebra. Let's go up and look at number four. We have a, a square pyramid, so we should know that the base is a square and that the slant height is twice the base length. So since we don't know what the base length is, we give it the variable, and traditionally we call that x. So our slant height is going to be 2x. <clears throat> So because it's a surface area problem, we are still going to calculate the area of your base. And this is a square with a side of x, so your base area is x squared. And it's a perimeter with a side of x, so x plus x plus x plus x is 4x. So now that you know your base area and your base perimeter, we can go into our formula. 90.3125 equals one base, right, because it's a pyramid, one base plus half of the perimeter times the slant height. So our slant height is 2x, your perimeter is 4x. So now we have an algebra problem, okay, that we can simplify. The first part we need to simplify is this this perimeter, this lateral surface area part, half of 4, well that's 2, and 2 times 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Okay, so we take half of 2, or half of 4, half of 4 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and then x times x is x squared. Okay, so we have some like terms, 1x squared and 4x squared is 5x squared. Okay, so we can divide both sides by 5, and then take the square root, sorry I'm not going to do this in one step just to save some space, take the square root, and I get x is 4.25. Okay, and usually when you solve for x, you're done, but that's not what the question says, right? x, in this case, is your base length. And my problem says, what is the slant height? <clears throat> so I'm going to take my 4.25 and multiply it by 2, because it wants the slant height. So L is 4.25 times 2, which is 8.5 millimeters when I want to use units correctly. Okay, then the ones closer to 12 are like this one. This is a composite surface area, and you have to decide whether this thing is a prism or not. Because if it's a prism, then it uses your traditional 2B plus pH formula to find the surface area. Okay, and how do you know what's a prism? Well, you know it because there are two of the exact same shape that make up your bases. So this has a, I don't even know what this shape is. It's a, it's a, it's a, I don't know what it is. But there's two of them, right? So this one is, in fact, going to be a prism. So we're going to use 2B plus pH, which means we need to find the base area, and we need to find the base perimeter. Now the base is this rectangular curvy thing. So let's find the area of this base. Okay, so this is make broken up into two shapes. You might see a rectangular shape. Right, do you see the rectangle there? And it's also broken into a um, semicircle. Okay, my student said a hemisphere, but a hemisphere is a three-dimensional shape. This is not three dimensions. This is a flat end of a mailbox. Right, so it's not a hemisphere. We don't want to use a hemisphere formula. It is a semicircle. So we have a rectangle and a semicircle because it's flat. Not three dimensional, the base is flat. Okay, so your rectangle has a dimension of three by five. Three times five is 15. And your semicircle has a radius of 2.5, right? So 5 would be the diameter, 2.5 would be the radius, and that's half of pi times 
2.5 squared. Okay, now I'm gonna use my calculator because I can't do that in my head. My calculator says that is 9.817 plus 15. It means I have a base area of 24.817. Okay, and then perimeter. So the perimeter is all the way around the outside. So we're gonna start here in the corner. So we have five, and then we'd make a left turn and we have three, and then we have the curvy part. So the curvy part is half of the perimeter. So half of two pi r, which our radius was 2.5 again. Um, so those cancel out. And then we have the last part that goes down, which is three. So five plus three plus three is 11 plus 2.5 pi. Right, that's the curvy part. Once again, I'm gonna need my calculator for this. 11 plus 2.5 pi is 18.854, my calculator says. So now that I have found my base area and my base perimeter, I can go into my formula for a prism to find the surface area. Two base areas, so that base area was 24.817, plus that perimeter from a second ago of 18 and change, times the height. And the height, of course, is the distance in between your bases. In this case, our height is 20. Okay, so we're going to put all that into your calculator to find the answer for the surface area of this composite figure. 426 and change. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for on your test. I want to see your base area. I want to see your base perimeter and then your formula. Okay, because these, these, these calculations are the geometry that you need to show when we're doing these kind of problems. Okay, so there's a prism. When we have a prism, we find the base area and we find the base perimeter and you use the formula. Okay, now this example is the other style where we have things that are missing. We have to augment your formula. Right, so your cylinder is missing one of its bases. You can't touch this, this is open, right? So this is a one base cylinder plus a no base hemisphere, right? So this is a hemisphere that's been inverted where the bottom of this hemisphere is open, right? So this is an open bowl sitting inside of a, um, a cylinder. Okay, and in my classes, I call this a true semi-sphere, not a hemisphere, because it's just the outside curved part. So the formula for a no base hemisphere is two pi r squared, and the formula for a one base cylinder is b plus ph. Okay, and if we're gonna use the formula directly, base area is pi r squared, base perimeter is two pi r. So this is gonna be our augmented formula that we're gonna to use to find the surface area that has a radius of four and a height of 10. So I get a grand total of 128 pi square inches. And once again, if you decimalize that on your test, that is fine. I know how to use a calculator and multiply that to check to see if your answer is the same as mine. Okay, just like you do. Now, the last one is one you have to draw yourself, and this is once again one of those ones where we have part of the formula that we're using and part of it that we're not. So we have a cylinder with a radius of six and a height of 12. So here's your cylinder with a radius of six and a height of 12. Has a cone placed on top of it so that the base of the cone is exactly the same as the base of the cylinder. 
and it says the height of this cone is 8. Okay. So we have to talk about what surfaces can we touch about this, um, this cylinder with a cone on top. All right, so once again, we only have one base for your cylinder because we can't touch the base that has the cone glued to it. And we have a no base cone because the base of your cone is glued to the top of the cylinder. Okay, so we're gonna have to augment our formula once again. Pi r squared, that's the base for your cylinder, plus two pi r h, that's the lateral surface area for your cylinder, plus half of the perimeter, two pi r for your cone times the slant height. Okay, so we can't include, or I guess if you do include, you just have to make sure to subtract everything out later. So if you use the normal formula, you're gonna to have to subtract off two bases, which is fine, I guess your brain can handle that. But for our cone, we have to calculate the slant height. So once again, we're gonna use Pythagoras, eight squared plus six squared equals L squared. So we have a slant height of 10. Okay, so I'm gonna pause and plug all this into my formula and we'll come up with the answer in a second. So our total surface area for this cylinder with a cone on top is 240 pi square centimeters. Okay, so hopefully this has refreshed your memory about how we do surface area and when we add them together or when we have to subtract for the composites. Okay, that's all. Goodbye.